Look at that stuff banging. Look how sticky that is. Oh, yeah. Trial's upside down, dog. It's going to be perfect. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. We're on to installing the stone veneer and granite caps to this beautiful front staircase. If you're a new viewer and you want to see how we excavated, backfilled, poured the concrete pad, and built this block work, check out the playlist link in the description below. But let's just get right into the day, guys. Hey! <laughs> What's up, bud? Not much, dude. About to just wash some rocks. Nice haircut, bud. Thanks. You get a nice haircut, too. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> Why look at me when you can look at you? We got some haircuts. <laughs> We're using Northeast Interlocking Stone Veneer Panels. The color blend is called New England. It's got a lot of nice blues, grays, tans in it. They make another color blend called Berkshire or Berkshire, however you want to pronounce it, and it's mainly blues, blues and grays. In this system, they have three different sizes, or three different pieces to the puzzle for them to interlock correctly. And that is the half pieces that we have here, and we have our full pieces. What's going to happen with the full pieces, you're going to lay that down, like, say, on an open side like that, and then the next piece that you're going to use will be a half piece. And they interlock like this. What that's going to do is that's going to create a spot for you to be able to put another full piece in. Like that. And then you just start stacking full pieces for however high you have to go. And then. So that would be that much area that quickly. These are the corner pieces. They're manufactured to wrap around and interlock with your half pieces. Okay, just to go over this one more time, these are made by Northeast Masonry. They call them thin stone veneer interlocking panels. You got full pieces, half pieces, and corner pieces. They offer two color blends on these panels. The one on the top right that you see is called Berkshire or Berkshire, and it's mostly blues and grays. And then you have the New England blend, which has those blues and grays, but also a lot of tans in it. The New England blend is the one we're using here, and the one that I use pretty much every time I go with these panels. Okay, so on the bottom step here, I started on the left side with the full corner, connecting it with a half piece. And to the right of that, that allows me to set a full piece on top of it interlocking. And then this right corner, I cut straight up and down, leaving me with those two small gaps that I just fill in with two small cuts. And then I can put that half piece in the missing gap and the first step is done. So on this side over here, I went back and forth on what I wanted to do. I started off with putting a half piece to interlock with the corner. But I just didn't like the way that it was going to all lay out. So I ended up taking the half piece out, cutting the interlocking tab off of the corner so it's straight up and down. And then I put a full piece next to that. That allowed me to put a half piece to the left of the full piece. And then to the left of the half piece, I just have a full piece cut to size to fit up against the foundation. That allows me to put a full piece on top of this half piece on the bottom, creating the interlocking design, and it's smooth sailing from there on out to the top. These panels are made to make your job easier, but they're not free from customization, especially when you're doing steps like this. I always dry lay out as much as I can to be as precise and accurate before I adhere them to the block with mortar. These panels are about the same price as regular stone veneer per square footage, but the money that you save is in the labor cost. I can install a project like this in one third of the time that it would take me to do it with regular stone veneer, cutting each piece by piece, customizing them to fit. That's where the customer saves money, and it's why they usually decide to go with these panels instead of regular veneer. 
So on these projects, we don't use just regular mortar. Like this right here, that's Type S mortar. We're using um, micro fiber reinforced mortar. These are about $45 a bag. And as you can see, we have two types. This manufacturer, I'm not sure if you have in your area, but this is the particular manufacturer that sells this stuff where I'm getting it. It's called Ardex. And the X77 is what we use for our vertical applications, like stone veneer. And then the X32 is what we use for our horizontal applications, like our, stone, our granite stone caps that we'll be using for our steps. That's what that's for. So we have those two different types of mortar. We're going to be mixing up some X77 for our veneer. So if you're doing this and you can't find that particular brand, just look for something comparable. Uh, microfiber reinforced tile mortar, tile and stone mortar. And uh, it's, some, it's very specialized and it's ma it makes it very sticky and it holds the bond way better than any type of just regular type S mortar that you would use. You want to mix this stuff with an electric paddle mixer on a drill. Uh, you want it a good consistency. If you make it, if you make it too dry, it's going to set up on you real quick and it's going to be hard to use. Uh, typically I use a five gallon bucket to mix in, but I just didn't have any on me that day, so I had to mix it in the pan. But you can mix by hand if you absolutely have to. It just doesn't mix as well in my opinion. Alright. Like I said, a bucket's a little bit better, but can make do sometimes. That's the consistency we're looking for. It's very sticky. That's the trowel sideways. Upside down. Look at that stuff, Benny. Look how sticky that is. Oh, yeah. Trial is upside down, dog. It's gonna be perfect. Yeah. That's some bats. It's hard to work with, like, with your trowel, but it's what you want for your, be your back of the... <laughs> Cut! <laughs> it's going to be my new thing, bud. Cut! So it's the consistency that's tough to work with. It's stuck to your trowel a lot, but it's what you want for the back of your stone veneer. Dude, I just completely <laughs> screwed you all up right there. Oh, oh my gosh. Get out of my way. <laughs> so with this stuff, you really don't need a thick bed of it. That's what it's also designed for, is to just put a little bit on there. I like to put rows of the mortar. Kind of like uh, like tile. Those trowels that kind of make uh, channels with the mortar. You do that, but just in a really big perspective I guess. Do a couple of piles like that. Get some on to where it interlocks. With this bottom row we have to lift it up just a little bit. So we're gonna um we're gonna want to use a little bit of three quarter inch stone. Put a couple there to just kind of help support it. Wow those three quarter pieces work perfect. Yeah, that. 
still. <laughs> Do you like waywos? Waywos! <laughs> <laughs> Kids whacked up. Yeah, that's what So there it is, there's the front step. As you've seen, those pieces of three quarter lifted us up just enough. That mortar that we use is very, very uh, sticky and a lot more solid than type S. The bond um, between the concrete block and the stone veneer is very strong. So once, and you've seen when I trowel the top off, we seal that, that joint that um, in between the block and the back of the stone veneer, we seal that up with the same mortar so that no water can get behind the veneer and cause it to pop out. Okay, you're gonna see how crucial these half pieces are to creating the interlocking design of these panels. If I were to put another full piece next to this full piece, it just wouldn't interlock. So when you put a half piece in at the bottom, it's gonna create the female end for another full piece to interlock into. I'm using the pieces of three quarter stone to lift it up to the right height. And then on the left side there, you can see I just cut a panel to size to fit up against the foundation. So now that that full piece is on top of the half piece, we're good to go until we get to the top layer. And then we'll be fitting in the half pieces where necessary. Now you can see over by the corner where it meets that full piece, there's two empty gaps. And all you have to do there is cut two small stones off of a panel and fit them in. Coming along nicely. I'm going to make that back cut over there. Laid and dry. We're out of mortar for now. So we're going to do some more dry fitting before we mix another batch. So I'll get that cut done. And I'll get this corner wrapped around, met in with that. And then we'll uh, work our way up. We got 17 and a quarter if we do it tight, but we want that quarter inch gap for uh, room room for everything to breathe. So we're going to cut this at 17. It's going to be right on that, that joint too, so we'll be able to get rid of this small piece in this cut as well. A full piece will pretty much come and cover this right here. So I'm going to measure from right here to right here and I'm going to cut the full piece flat. So we got 15 and 3 quarter. We're going to give ourselves an, uh, about an eighth of an inch on each side. So we need 15 and a half or just a touch over 15 and a half. Now 
now we're just going to carve out where the step's going to be. Veneer is done. And mortared on. Geo grid's in the way, so you can't really see it too good, but all set. We seal off all these joints here on the top to prevent any water getting behind our veneer. And now it's time to set our top cap. We're gonna lay that on get our one inch overhang and square it off with the house and then we're gonna cut and lay in our side treads that's the good stuff bud Other than that, <clears throat> just like the veneer, you just make some nice even piles, even height, and when you set it down, that's all gonna disperse out and create a nice bond. That's an inch. It's a little less than an inch. All right, so now that we have this here, um, these kind of treads are rock faced in the front and they're smooth cut in the back so we're going to square the back of the step off with our house. Right there is 35 and 7 eighths and that is 36 and an eighth. So this needs to come in. It's 36 and that moved that to 36 that's square with the house that is an eighth forward wow that's level I don't know if you guys can see that it's a perfect eighth of a pitch forward which is what we want It's a perfectly level side to side, which is what we want. It's 36 on the dot, but we need a little bit of a room. We need half an inch gap. So 35 and a half. So we're going 35 and a half from there. And from here. And as I was cutting that piece, my battery died. I didn't have any other batteries charged. So this is the day after we've cut those two return pieces and adhered them on so they could sit overnight. And now we're doing the inner landing. I'll be honest with you guys, I was extremely bummed out as, as I was editing this video. I had a lot of head camera action and my camera angles were just so off and I never even realized it so I'm sure you guys could tell as you were watching this that a lot of the times with the head cam on it just wasn't that good so there's a lot of content that I actually just had to completely get rid of because it was useless and it really bummed me out this was like the the best part of this install and I just didn't get much good footage so I apologize for that but anyway we're off to setting in the landing uh, the landing pieces, for people that, that want to know the technical terms, 
the inner pieces there that are thinner, they're called pattern stock, granite pattern stock. And the type of granite we're using is called blue mist. This pattern stock is generally an inch and a quarter thick, but it varies an eighth of an inch sometimes. So we set it in type S mortar, and we also point the joints at the same time so that the joints adhere and cure with the mortar underneath. Sometimes people install the pattern stock and then point the joints later, which is fine, but I've, I find that if you do them both at the same time, it all locks together a little bit better. And then, of course, you want to use Type S mortar to seal up the joint that's underneath the tread. That's what you call the rock-faced pieces of granite that we're using for the actual steps and returns. They're called the tread. But you want to seal that up to make sure no water gets underneath there. And then you just use a, a wet construction, construction sponge to clean up any mortar that you get onto the veneer. Sealing up all these joints is a very important factor in a project like this, especially here in Massachusetts. You want as much surface water, or rain water, I should say, to be able to bead off of these steps. It's also why we have it all sloped forward one-eighth of a pitch. We are moving along over here. All the pattern stock is in. Got just that back corner there to point. It's looking nice. Then we just made up a batch of Ardex 32 so we can get our last two treads set in. And then behind these uh, treads, the joint in between the veneer and the tread, we have to point as well. Y'all ready for this? Okay, we're using that other type of Ardex that I showed you earlier, the 32, and that's for horizontal applications like treads. It's a very sticky type of mortar and the bond is far greater than any kind of regular type S mortar or type N mortar that you can buy. And once we set the treads and get them sloped forward and level side to side, we use type S mortar to seal off the joint behind it and underneath it. You can use whatever kind of trowel you feel comfortable with getting it into the joints. And then you just need a nice construction sponge to clean up the mess that you leave behind. Once again, I wanted to apologize for the video. Like I said before, I was pretty bummed out about the, the lack of good footage on this part of the project. I feel like it was the most important one to have good footage. And I dropped the ball on that. So I was pretty disappointed. Hope you guys enjoyed the video otherwise. Um, we enjoyed this project. I do a lot of stone veneer projects like this. And using that blue mist granite is just out of this world. It's so much different than any other type of granite. And the color blend just goes so well with this stone veneer. And um, you guys are going to see this project has a lot more parts to it. Like the front walkway. We got 10 steps. 10 blue mist granite steps. They're not tread stocks like two inches, they're full seven inch steps. And um, this install was just really fun and it completely changed this house tenfold. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, stay tuned for the next videos of this project. Until the next one guys, God bless. Peace. <laughs>